So we are mostly talking about uh, um, Aura, uh, well, that today is about Aura 4031. So uh, uh, let's, let's see uh, what we can come up with here. Uh, before I do examples, before I show some examples, I just explain you something about shared pool. I'm going to use a view called xdollarksmsp. I, I, I just add this here. So these demos, what I do here, don't do this in, um, in production. This x dollar table is dangerous. So there actually are x dollars, especially this one, which can hang your database. You know, with a plain select query, you can hang your database. So uh, uh, I'll explain why this is, but uh, um, I use this in my little laptop for demonstrating something about shared pool. So instead of uh, uh, multiple slides and diagrams, I just show you this. So uh, whenever I query x dollar ksmsp, uh, this actually stands for uh, kernel, ser uh, kernel service memory management and SP's shared pool. Whenever I query this, then Oracle actually takes the shared pool latches. Nowadays we can have multiple latches. It takes the shared pool latches, it pretty much locks the shared pool that nobody else would allocate or release memory from, from it, and then it walks through entire shared pool. It scans through the entire shared pool structure, and it will just return me information about every single little chunk of memory in it. So, so if, if, a, if a thousand chunks of memory have been allocated uh, in the, from the shared pool, and, I, and another thousand chunks are free, then I would see 2,000 rows in here. You see, in my, uh, my uh, uh, database, this shared pool consists of 34,000 chunks of memory. So that's not really too useful information or not too interesting. What I would really want to know is, I would want to know are these chunks free or are they used for something? So luckily there is a column called class. So KSM CH class, uh, CLS means kernel service memory chunk class. All right. So uh, when I run it like that, I see the number of chunks of memory in, uh, in the shared pool. And I see that 6,000 chunks are free. Uh, also 26 chunks, 26 more chunks are also free, but they reside in a, in a special area called reserved area. So the reserved area is, a, is an area for big allocations. Oracle doesn't let small allocations um, to allocate memory from there, even if, 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 if you have a shortage in the main shared pool area. So this is for reducing, uh, re reducing fragmentation, fragmentation, that, that if, if, there are, if there is not enough free memory in the free lists of shared pool, then if the allocation is big enough, then it's going to go in, into this reserved area, which is set aside in shared pool. So how do we know whether a chunk is big enough to be considered big or not? Well, there is a parameter. Shared pool reserved min alloc. So we shouldn't tune it. You know, this is not something we, 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 wanna, we wanna touch. Uh, but, but this just says that uh, uh, the chunk, the allocation size should be at least 4,400 bytes in order um, to Oracle's heap manager to go to, the, to this reserved area. So basically the whole idea is you wanna keep small players, you want to keep small fish separated from the big fish. Uh, so that's, that's, why, that, that's how everybody fits in there better. Um, and so, and uh, uh, you know, you, you probably know this, this parameter. So this is the parameter which actually controls how much of space uh, is reserved for the, for this, uh, Mm, with, from the shared pool for this big allocation. So right now, in my case, it's only five megabytes. And actually where this number comes from, it comes from this parameter. So I have set my shared pool size to 100 megs. 
only, you know, I, I want to cause trouble. I set it to 100 megs, and this parameter defaults to 5, and which is 5%. And then this just shows that how big is gonna be, this reserved area is gonna be. So whatever R as you see here, R means that this chunk is actually in this reserved area. Alright? So we see that many free chunks. I'll talk about the other chunks uh, shortly. But, but just knowing how many chunks uh, we have, uh, I, I, you know, free, it's not enough. Because we don't know whether these chunks are 20 bytes in size or, you know, 200 kilobytes each, right? So we actually want to see the size of these chunks. So in addition to count star, I would probably want some I want the sum as well. I want to see the total size of a chunk. So you see, this is now in bytes. This is the size of a chunk. And I see that, hey, we have uh, four megabytes of, uh, of uh, free memory in the shared pool. So, uh, um, um, so, you know, so this is a better indication of how much free space we have. I mean, if you look in, into that, into this that way. But even that is not enough, because sometimes shared pools get fragmented. Or actually, I have to say, shared pools are always fragmented. You know, whatever, you know, the problem comes from, the fundamental problem comes from the fact that you can allocate different sizes of chunks from the shared pool. You know, if you, if, you, if you allocate chunks of 4 kilobytes to, you know, 3 kilobytes, 5 kilobytes, and so on, you know, these, are, these chunks are, they are not all the same size, and therefore, inevitably, sometimes you end up with gaps between the chunks. Because you, if you release a 3 kilobyte, uh, if you, if you re release or free a 3 kilobyte chunk, you know, this space is going to be free, but you cannot put the 4 kilobyte chunk in there because there is only three kilobytes of uh, continuous space um, available. So, uh, uh, so uh, shared pools are inevitably, they are always fragmented, but, but usually it doesn't cause trouble. Usually nobody notices it because there is enough free space, or when, the, when, we, when you run out of free space, you can always flash out big enough chunks to, uh, to, to create free space. But now if the fragmentation gets worse than it usually is, then you may end up with a situation that you flush out uh, a lot of chunks, but all of these chunks are only 2 or 3 kilobytes. But you want 4 kilobytes. So you may end up flushing out hundreds or thousands of chunks in order to search you know, um, uh, for a big enough continuous uh, piece of space. You know, sometimes you flush out 2 chunks which are next next to each other, then you can merge um, that, uh, these three chunks to one bigger chunk. But, uh, uh, but sometimes that's not enough. So, uh, so you know, the, 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 the fragmentation problem shows up when um, you don't have big enough free slots or space uh, um, in the shared pool. And you cannot even flush out everything, because you know, even if you do a flush shared pool, then not everything can be flashed out. Because these cursors, which are currently in use, which are, which are being executed or open, you know, you cannot flash them out because somebody is using them. So uh, uh, even the flash, shared pool flash may not eventually help you. And for that reason, whenever we want to troubleshoot or understand um, do we have a fragmentation problem or not, we should also look into this. Uh, minimum size of a chunk, it's not that important, but more important is maximum size of a chunk. You see what's going on here, so uh, um, right now, these are the free chunks. The biggest free chunk is, is, is uh, you know, less than 5 kilobytes. So luckily Oracle 
for its regular SQL operations. Nowadays, it doesn't try to allocate 20 kilobytes or 50 kilobytes anymore. You know, 50 kilobytes is a very big number in terms of shared pool allocation sizes. Usually, Oracle, you know, uh, up, um, uh, takes four kilobytes, up to four kilobytes. And if your SQL statement requires more, then it just splits this allocation up into smaller pieces for SQL statements. But as I will show uh, soon, for PLSQL, things are not that easy. So, uh, so uh, uh, what we do see from here is that, uh, you know, we, we don't have... Uh, so, we, you see, we have 6,000 free chunks, and the total amount is 4 megabytes. So, we have 4 megabytes of free space. But this is only useful for us if we want to allocate up to this amount of space. But the moment we want 5 kilobytes, then we have a problem. We don't have any chunks which are bigger than that. Then we have to make space. You know, even though we have 4 megabytes of total space, Oracle has to flush out, um, flush out some chunks in hope to find a bigger chunk or in hope to you know, free a smaller chunk which is just next to some free chunk. So it, so it could coalesce or merge them and, and you end up with you know, six or seven kilobytes and then you take your five. In my case, let's see what happens here. So, uh, you know, obviously you don't want to flush your shared pool in your busy OLTP environment, um, uh, but sometimes that's used as a quick and dirty workaround. So, you see, I flushed, uh, flushed the shared pool. You see, now the number of free chunks went smaller. You see, the total amount, total space went up. You know, we, we, uh, we now have 30 megabytes. We used to have 4 megabytes only. So we have 30 megabytes of free space, so this went up. But for some reason, the number of chunks went down. And the, the reason is exactly as I said. When Oracle detects that there are two chunks uh, next to each other which are free, then it merges them. So basically Oracle now flesh, flushed out a lot of chunks what it could, and while it was flushing it realized that, hey, you know, the, 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 the neighbor of that chunk is also free, so therefore let's merge it into a bigger chunk. And you see where we, what we get from here is, is now the biggest chunk is, is um, 50 kilobytes. So, uh, uh, well, now you know, we can do allocations up to 50, 50 kilobytes without having to flush anything out. All right, um, so I'll see if I have any, any questions which I should answer right away. Okay, um, so uh, uh, Greg asked, asked uh, whether uh, uh, a big execution plan can lead to Aura 4031 and, and no. So ex execution plans can also be split into small pieces, uh, four kilobyte pieces, starting from Oracle, um, I think Oracle 10.2 at least, maybe earlier as well. You know, in earlier versions, 9i and so on, you had this issue. Okay. Uh, so, but PLSQL has a problem, and I'll, I'll, I'll soon demo it to you. Okay, and uh, and uh, now I had a few more questions, um, but I that's I actually intended to explain it next. So first, I will take some uh, tea. So uh, I'll be silent for five seconds. <coughs> All right, so. Uh, so far, I showed you free chunks, um, but what are these here? So, I'll start with the simplest: permanent chunks. These are these are not used for cursors or PLSQL and so on. Permanent chunks are used for um, uh, well, permanent al allocations, things like the V dollar session array or V dollar process array or the transaction array, you know, things what you allocate during the startup or sometimes even expand during the runtime, but things what Oracle expects to never to release. So, you know, VDollar session, VDollar process uh, and the other, many other views like that, they are arrays in memory. They actually reside in shared pool and they are permanent. So they are not flushed out. So they are not like cursors which get flushed out. 
even if a session even if a session logs out you know this session slot is not flushed out from memory the slot is just there it will wait for reuse and sometimes oracle can also pre-allocate memory uh, into this permanent chunk so uh, i haven't checked it in later latest versions but uh, Steve Adams also wrote in eight iodines that when you start up the instance then Oracle allocates a large chunk of shareful memory as permanent just to hide this memory from the regular memory allocations and the reasoning is is that if you have a lot of uh, SQL which is not using bind variables or if you have a lot of allocations which get allocated and and never used again right you want them to be thrown, aw thrown away sooner than later. So you don't want them to you know, stay in the uh, cache for a long time. Uh, so so and, uh, how the, what the trick Oracle did is that it took some percentage of the shared pool, allocated it as a permanent one, and then what happened? It, so whenever you had a lot of chunks which didn't get reused, then uh, when a new allocator got, came in, they went to free lists, and they saw that hey the free lists are empty there, there, is no, there are no free chunks which are big enough and therefore these allocators started flushing out these chunks which have, had been used only once so Oracle actually keeps track that whether a chunk has been used only once or multiple times so, so um, there is a thing called LRU list in addition to free lists in the shared pool, you know, least recently used list. And this LRU list has transient end and recurrent end. So any chunk which is only pinned twice, you know, first you pin it because you load it into library cache, and second time you pin it because you now want to execute it, right? Any chunk which is only pinned twice is gonna be in the transient end. So, so uh, any SQL which you only execute once, it's you know this this SQL is gonna be pinned twice. You know that you load it into cache, that's one pin, and then you execute it, that's another pin. So this is gonna be in a transient end, and these will be the chunks which are first thrown away when there is memory pressure. But if you re-pin something, if, if you pin something again. You know, you, sorry, if you execute the statement the second time, then you will have to pin it again. So that's the third pin already. And then once you unpin it, once the execute finishes, Oracle sees, oops, this guy has been pinned three times, therefore this is a chunk which is repeatedly used. And it will actually put it into the recurrent end of the LRU list. So what happens is that if you run out of memory in the free lists, then you first start flushing out things in the transient end, just to get rid of these unused things, which are not used anymore. And now when you go through the transient list, you flush everything out and you still don't find what you want, you know, big enough chunk. So this is when normally you would have to start flushing out other chunks, which are repeatedly used from the recurrent end. But as a little hack here, Oracle actually checks whether, whether there is any hidden permanent memory. So before it starts flushing out these repeatedly used things, it will go and see whether it can uh, take some of this hidden shared pool memory. So you know that's the, that's the general idea. idea. I, I, I'm sure things have changed over versions, plus a lot of things have changed now when we can have multiple shared pool subpools. And we'll get there as well pretty soon, I promise. Okay, so, well, that was a quite lengthy explanation about the permanent chunks. Um, so, the next one is freeable chunks. You see, um, um, so, uh, even though I did a flush shared pool, not everything f was flushed out here. And the reason, you know, the, the, uh, an important thing to remember here is that freeable does not mean free okay i mean first of all you know it's very simple you know if something is freeable then it cannot be free right you know if it was free then it would be called free right so it's not called free it's called freeable which means that it's taken by somebody but it's freeable 
And, and what this freeable means is that this chunk is freeable by the same object which allocated it. So you see, as opposed to recreatable, recur means recreatable, which means that uh, um, um, anybody can throw away this recreatable chunk. Anybody can flush it out, as long as it's not pinned. Of course, when it's pinned, then somebody is using it right now. You cannot just throw it away. But anybody who allocates memory from shared pool can throw away recreatable chunks. They are kind of, because they are recreatable. You know, chunks like dictionary cache. You can always load your data back from the data dictionary, right? You don't, so therefore dictionary cache is recreatable. Your query execution plans and query text, and you know, these are also recreatable. Because you can always rerun your query and it can be always re-optimized. Re so anybody can f uh, throw away recreatable chunks which are not pinned. But freeable chunks can be only thrown away by the same uh, module in Oracle kernel uh, which actually allocated it. So, uh, so, um, uh, so freeable means that I'm allocating it, yes I'm gonna free it someday, but but it's up to me, to, it's up to that allocator to decide when it's going to be freed. It cannot be thrown away by somebody else who is, who, is, who is short on memory. And now if you wonder that if freeable only, I mean, if freeable can be flushed out only when, uh, when the allocator wants, then how come, uh, you know, this number went down? You know, we used to have 20 megs here, now we have uh, four megs only. Well, things, you know, in, uh, I mean, the, the rabbit hole goes deeper. Um, by, by the allocator, I don't mean a session or a user. By the allocator, I mean this kernel module. And sometimes it happens that Oracle allocates a cursor and it puts the cursor text into a recreatable place. It allocates some other, and it allocates some other uh, chunk of memory, which it makes freeable but it links it to that cursor. So my cursor owns that freeable chunk, but the cursor itself is recreatable. So now when I flush out that cursor, then whatever code path is doing the flushing, it sees that, hey, there is a freeable chunk and it's, it's, it's owned by that cursor, which I'm gonna flush out anyway, and therefore it's okay to free it. As usual, the rabbit hole goes deeper, so you know, the and things change over versions and so on. That's why this whole shared pool thing is so so um, uh, unexpected and, and um, hard to troubleshoot. Okay, so much about this uh, these internals. Um, let's see if I have any more questions. So one question that, can we flush pinned objects? Uh, no. What actually happens is that when you want to, f when you issue a flush shared pool, or you look for space and are you're flushing stuff, then you walk through your linked lists and you see that hey, there is a there is a chunk which is recreatable, but before flushing it, we will ch we will check the chunk header, and if the chunk header if the chunk is pinned, there is a bit in the chunk header which says this chunk is pinned, therefore I cannot flush it. So then then I will just uh, uh, skip this chunk. Um, so uh, one question is the LRU in the buffer cache or shared pool as well? Yes, in both. You know they're they're totally different things. But buffer cache has a bunch of LRUs. Shared pool has uh, one LRU list per per heap. Okay. So I'll, I'll get back to some other questions later on. Um, um, by the way, when we talk about fragmentation you probably have never heard about fragmentation in buffer cache. Yes, you have heard about fragmentation in shared pool, but never heard about fragmentation in buffer cache. And there is no such thing. And the simple reason is that, that in buffer cache, you only allocate uh, buffers of the same size. You know, if you have eight kilobyte block size, then all the buffers in the buffer pool will be eight kilobytes. You don't have like nine and seven kilobytes, you know, this is when the fragmentation is a problem. So you won't, you, you cannot have fragmentation if all your buffers are the same size. 
And even if you have multiple block sizes in the database, then it just means that you will have to have multiple buffer caches. One buffer cache, or it's called buffer pool actually. One buffer pool is for 8 kilobyte buffers, another one is for uh, 4 kilobyte buffers. And that's what Oracle has tried to do as well since Oracle 10.2. They they have tried to um, um, kind of um, normalize some of the chunk sizes. So they they try to actually allocate not 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 things like 11 kilobytes, 12 kilobytes, you know, nine and eight and so on. They actually always break the allocation down to either one kilobyte or four kilobyte sizes. So when I when I run this. Um, All right, so just ch check well, how many uh, how many chunks I have with different sizes. So this is the count, and this is the chunk size. So uh, um, well, this is 10.2. They are not doing that good job here yet. In 11G, they have are have normalized even better. But you see, uh, there is one chunk size is four kilobytes, and. Uh, and then, you know, even though I have bigger cursors, even though I have cursors which take more space, Oracle breaks it down to these normalized sizes. And this is another, uh, so this is what the execution plans usually use. And this is what this uh, cursor heap zeros uh, use. So this is with some cursor metadata. So this is the chunk size and we have 5,000 chunks with that size, kind of normalized sizes. All right. Uh, so let's let's look into some metrics now. Um, so um, um, actually, so whenever we have an issue, let's uh, let me let me let me come up with a, a Aura forty thirty one now. I have actually I failed to do this demo earlier today, but um, I, I have to admit that I did prepare a little little. And then now I got this demo working. So the guys who watch the video later, they will see it as well. All right. So this is a, a script that I use for uh, causing hard parses. So uh, uh, basically, um, I just run a loop. And then uh, I just run in this loop, I will just do a select count star and where row num equals this number. And you see it's, it's, not, it's not the bind variable, it's actually a literal variable. And it comes from dbms random. So basically I run the same SQL statement again and again and again with just different uh, literal, uh, literal value. Uh, all right. Which is that? I'm a graphic Yeah, I'm a i All right, so um, let's run this. And it takes a parameter how many iterations I want to do. Well, I want to do many iterations. Let's hard parse like, uh, like hell. All right. One statistic. Um, one statistic which appeared in, in Oracle 10.1 or 10.2. Uh, which which you also see in AWR and StatsPack. It's called a SQL area ev evicted. So this comes from V dollar stat or DBA hist uh, when it's AWR or stats. I think stats sysstat or something when you when you query the uh, uh, StatsPack tables. So. Uh, um, this is an indication. This is kind of an indicate, indicator of, of shared pool shortage or shared pool's pressure. There is a better indicator, but which needs X dollar access. So, uh, but um, you see, this number goes up because in the other session, I'm uh, actually hard parsing a lot, and I'm having a, a lot of um, uh, memory allocations going on. 
So uh, this statistic called SQL area evicted is, is a good indi indicator. But what does it mean? It means that somebody has thrown away or thrown an execution plan out of the, out of the um, uh, shared pool. SQL area is the execution plan. And if the memory shortage is even worse, then you probably see this as well, that, that actually the, the child cursor metadata, not just the execution plan, but also the metadata about child cursor, like, uh, you know, um, uh, what, uh, what privileges are needed to run this child cursor, plus its statistics, uh, this will be aged out as well. So if you look into this metric over time, you, know, you put it into Excel or something, I'll show you that as well, then that's a, a kind of a good indicator um, of seeing whether, um, you know, how much of uh, stuff with, with flush out from shared pool. So, um, okay, so before I will come up with the Sora 1431, I'll just show you, uh, um, I'll show you a statistic. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you have seen this in various reports. Uh, it's parse count, and this is the hard part, right? So, uh, whenever you soft parse anything, whenever you do a library cache lookup and, and uh, basically see whether your cursor is in there, in the cache, you have a, a soft parse. And that's the parse count total. And if, if, you do, if you do find your cursor and you can reuse it, then that's it. Then hard parse doesn't happen. But if you don't find your cursor, or if you cannot reuse it for some reason, right, then you will also have to do a hard parse. So, so Soft parse always happens, but hard parse will additionally happen when you cannot, when you actually have to compile the cursor again. Uh, and uh, I use these statistics uh, in my snapper script. So, uh, uh, for example, if I do have, um, you know, this cursor evictions going on, and, and if, if I do have a, a lot of parsing, which, which I see from some AWR report, then I can use snapper like this. I can say, um, I will say, uh, uh, show the v dollar sysstat statistics. I'm querying v dollar sysstat, not sysstat. Sysstat is session level. Every session has their own stats. And I will say, uh, gather only these uh, statistics. Don't don't show me weight weight events and so on. And include only these statistics, which contain parse parse count or they contain uh, um, evicted right I, I can do this so uh, hmm. uh, so th this I can do in 10g on 9i I can uh, use only this like syntax but in 10g I can use a regular expression so I can actually do this in 10g I can say this it's like a regular expression using Oracle regex and I say monitor for five seconds, do this monitoring exercise only once, and monitor all sessions in the instance. So you know this this will tell me who hard parses the most, and and uh, who evicts or or flushes out other uh, stuff the most. You see, apparently we have three sessions here: 144, 149, 162. And when I look into the numbers here, so H delta means the human readable delta. So it's, uh, you know, instead of showing a thousand as, as three, three zeros here, I show K or M for million, if you do millions of logical IOs or whatever. And, and, uh, and this column here is normalized to per second. You see, I sampled for six seconds, actually. I requested five, but I sampled for six seconds. Um, so I see that during that six seconds, somebody did that many total parses. I mean, this session here did that many total parses, which is the soft parses. But 8,000 out of these also caused hard parses. And if I divide it by second, I see we did almost 1,500 uh, hard parses per second. And this guy also, uh, you know, evicted Throw, throw away, throw out 
uh, about one and a half thousand um, uh, SQL areas or execution plan chunks or heaps, um, uh, execution plans pretty much um, uh, from the shared pool. So now I see that this guy is the troublemaker because other, you know, this guy only parsed 32 times per second compared to 8,000, it's nothing, right? So, um, um, uh, so now all I would need to do is just see what this session is doing, perhaps. This seed 149. So I can use Snapper or whatever, you know. Once you know, have the seed, you can do anything. You can enable SQL trace and so on. And I can just uh, pick one of the SQLs. So the top SQL is, is my own PLSQL loop, this script. Uh, but actually, if I look into the other SQLs, okay, this guy is already thrown away. So let's uh, let's do it differently. I know my seed is 149 again. Then you select SQL text from V dollar SQL, where uh, SQL ID equals Because of all this activity, this old SQL ID, the text for it was already aged out. But uh, uh, this is how I can get this real-time result. And when I see what this guy is running, this session is uh, constantly running uh, this same statement, just with a different literal value. So this is a clear case that, hey, I should really use bind variables or one of these oracle tricks. Um, to, to replace literals on the fly, like this uh, cursor sharing equals force. And, uh, and, and uh, this issue probably goes away. I won't have um, that much of new, I, I, don't, I won't have so many new allocations from shared pool. All right. Another, before I will come up with this uh, uh, Aura 4031, Another thing is x dollar kghlu. So this is this is the contents of that script. Again, in, in, it's part of my script package. So kghlu. Unfortunately, you need to be sys in order to read it. Oracle doesn't externalize it into a v dollar view. And I only have one sub pool in this uh, shared pool. So, uh, uh, but this is a useful um, uh, useful. Uh, view which indicates how much activity there is going on in this uh, in this shared pool so how much allocation ac activity and so on so for example it tells me how many chunks have been flushed out so i've even written scripts which collect this data every few minutes and just you can plot it later on uh, this is how many times you know, we have uh, uh, moved some chunk around in the lru list basically pin, when you pin or basically when you unpin a chunk, then uh, this uh, will result, often result in a LRU list move around. And this tells you how many recurrent chunks we have and how many uh, transient chunks we have in this, uh, in this, uh, in this particular heap or sub pool of the heap. Okay. And, and this column tells you how many times we didn't, we, how many times we didn't find anything um, uh, when we flushed out chunks. So basically, Oracle first goes to the free lists where you have completely free chunks. If it doesn't find a big enough chunk from there, then it will start flushing out, you know, evicting existing chunks. And apparently, since the instance was started, this flushing has failed. Basically, we have flushed out everything we could, and we still didn't succeed. Then, and this is, this means Aura 4031s. 30, yeah, or this means these errors. Aura 4031s. We, 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 we didn't find from free list, we, we scanned, you know, this means free unpinned. We tried to free unpinned chunks, we freed them, uh, but we didn't, uh, we didn't succeed finding a big enough chunk, and we had to return one error. And this tells you the last size of uh, how big this allocation size was how many bytes we wanted, why, why we failed. And this error is actually shown somewhere in this error text as well. And it's really important. 
Because in my case, I immediately see that, hey, this guy wanted over a half a megabyte of memory. That's a really long, uh, that's a really big amount in Oracle, uh, mm, uh, you know, shared pool terms. Usually, the, usually Oracle plays around with small fish, so to speak. Usually it's half a K, one kilobyte, up to four kilobytes. So it's really not healthy to constantly release and allocate these big, uh, big, um, big amounts of memory. So what I would do in this case, well, that's clearly a case where I would want to, uh, I mean, first of all, I have to find out what is this object, uh, what caused this allocation, and we'll get there as well. But, but secondly, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever object it is, I would, if possible, I would want to pin it into shared pool during the instant startup. Because it's, it's better to do these big allocations instantly when you start up, after you start up, uh, when, when you still have plenty of big free chunks available, as opposed to somewhere later when everything is already f uh, fragmented because of all these small allocations. All right. So, and that Oracle actually has gone to this reserved area, and even it didn't, even didn't find this big enough chunk from the reserved area. Uh, um, and then the, uh, it had a miss. Well, and the miss me means that I didn't get my chunk. This allocation failed from the uh, reserved area. So this is the last uh, uh, allocation size which caused the failure. This is the maximum ever seen. All right. Uh, so, okay, I, I've been promising to show you this uh, um, Aura, Aura 40, 31 error now, and let's do it. All right, so I have a, a, a package. So I told you when you run a really long SQL statement, then Oracle breaks it down to four kilobyte chunks. In 10G anyway, maybe in earlier versions, I, I don't remember that anymore. Uh, but you know, 9i is ancient anyway, um, and 8i and so on. But anyway, so this is my, my package. I am, uh, I'm not using a SQL statement, I'm actually creating a PLSQL package. And uh, this, or it's actually a procedure, not even a package. And you see what the contents are. I just wanted to create a lot of stuff in here. And you see down here, this file itself is uh, 3,700 lines long. And it's this file itself, uh, all, with, with all the white space, it's four megabytes long. Sorry, no, it's 400 kilobytes long. Right. So, uh, uh, so uh, this is a hell of a big PLSQL package or procedure. Well, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you already uh, see that, hey, you know, it's probably better to have many different packages or multiple different packages which are smaller instead of one PLSQL package which is, uh, um, uh, you know, 10 megabytes in size. And in newer versions, Oracle actually can split out individual procedures of a package, as far as I understand. But anyway, in this case, this is one single procedure. You cannot really split this up into, or Oracle cannot split this one up into smaller pieces. All right. So before I do it, I just uh, take a quick look into uh, what's uh, going on in the in the in here, right? So uh, we we have uh, the biggest free chunk is five kilobytes only, and the biggest free chunk in this uh, reserved area is two hundred kilobytes. So, and now I will run my script. So this will create, try to create the package. I could actually try to recompile the existing one because you know I already have a version here. Okay, it's still running. It's probably gonna take a long time because you see my parsing script is still working as well. I'm still hard parsing little statements like hell. So I'm, I'm competing for the shared pool resources. So, uh, I see, I just wanted to see what's the situation here. Uh, apparently, 
uh, I don't have or actually you see now the maximum size the biggest chunk is only four kilobytes so I don't even have you know, you see, now it's a bit bigger so you see there is constantly some dynamic action happening in the shared pool so we flush out all things and so on and you see what happened here we have an error okay that's interesting uh, let's see what is this error and voila we actually have a an error or a 4031 so and this is what we were really what this session is really about um, now one of the most important things to look into is of course where is this error because in this case it's in shared pool but sometimes it happens in in uh, large pool in in java pool streams pool and you know whatever heaps we have it never happens in buffer cache you know because buffer cache is not managed by this heap management it's its own structure but here we have that yes indeed we have a shared pool issue here this is how many bytes we want to allocate that's also very important because right now it's kind of clear that hey this issue happened because uh, uh, because uh, we wanted so much memory so uh, if, if you if you ever see that you try to allocate four kilobytes only not 500 but not 500 kilobytes but only four kilobytes right this is when when you can say that hey the, the share pool is badly fragmented because you cannot even allocate four kilobytes but if you know if 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 you don't if you cannot allocate 500, 500 kilobytes or a megabyte that's not really a, a a bad fragmentation in the sense that that's you know that's a sort of a, uh, you know, a problem with such big allocations and what you would want to do against these things you know these big allocation issues is uh, is uh, uh, well one one thing is just whatever big allocations you have all these packages pin them into memory immediately when you start up so uh, uh, you know it doesn't give you any performance advantage really all it gives you is that this package doesn't get aged out because sometimes you do have packages which are only used every night you know for some batch job or every week once and then these issues come back every week or every every night but once you pin it into your cache yes you use more memory but you won't have this issue and of course, uh, 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 the large pool reserved area. Oh, sorry, not large pool, uh, shared pool reserved area. This is, this is the reason, I mean, this reserved area exists for such big allocations. This is why we have, uh, why we have um, the reserved area. It's exactly, it's, it's all about separating big fish from the small fish. So, uh, uh, and we actually have five megabytes of reserved area. So, uh, um, but in my case, I have engineered this whole thing the way that even that's not enough. Because uh, there is one more thing to know about Oracle. If, the, if, if Oracle... Um, um, if, if, if you have five megabytes here it doesn't mean that you have five megabytes of continuous free space in the reserved area Oracle actually splits it into uh, into uh, granules so um, depending on your SGA size things consist you know uh, you know shared pool and then buffer cache and so on they consist of granules and in my case the granule is only four megabytes you see my share pool is a hundred megs my granule size so this is the amount by which you can extend or reduce some some um, some buffer cache or, or share pool size the granule size is is uh, four megabytes I can actually query this SGA dynamic components. So with our SGA dynamic components, you see this is the shared pool. Its current size is 100 megs, right? 
and it consists of granules which are 4 megabytes each. So we actually have 25 granules. Share pool is 100 megs, granule is 4 megabytes, we have 25 granules. And uh, how Oracle allocates this space, it actually takes an equal amount from each granule. So, so it doesn't take one full granule of 4 megs and another megabyte from another granule. No, it actually splits this allocation, reserved area, to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, so it spreads it across all the granules. So if I have a 5 megabytes to spread around uh, 25 granules, it means that I'll, I'll have a... Um, You know, my brain has stopped working. Uh, about 200 kilobytes uh, per granule. Right? So I have about two, two, 200 kilobytes per granule. So when, you, when I start up, yes, Oracle allocates 5 megabytes of reserved area. But you see, well, we actually have 26 three chunks here. Yes, the total is about five megabytes. But each of these granules, you know, this five megabytes is split into 20, 25 or 26 different, uh, different physical regions. Therefore, the biggest granule is only, or sorry, the biggest free chunk, biggest continuous free chunk in this area is also only 200 kilobytes. So, uh, uh, you know, in, so you know, this is a, another limitation which I deliberately engineered here. Uh, what you would have to do in real life, uh, in real life, you know, check the granule size, right? If your SGA is bigger than um, a gigabyte, or I don't even remember what what this threshold was, uh, from or 128 megs, I think. It probably is version dependent and so on. If your if your SGA is bigger then Oracle uses bigger granules, like um, 16 megs is a default in bigger SGAs. In some cases, you might want to even change, change it bigger. But if, you, if this number, if the granule size is 16 megabytes, then instead of having 26 chunks, which are two, 200 kilobytes each, you would only have, uh, you know, less, uh, four times less, something like uh, six, seven, um, three, uh, chunks in this area, and all of each of them would be 800 kilobytes or something like this. All right. So, whenever you have an error, look into this. Where where did we have the error? And how much space we wanted? How much memory we wanted to alloc when, wanted to allocate? Plus, there is some extra info that. What for? You see, uh, it, the unknown object means that it's not a SQL statement. It's not a SQL statement. Otherwise, we would, would actually be able to, we could show you uh, the beginning of SQL text as well. But we already see that we want to allocate some, something from the PLSQL Diana structure and some whatever, whatever that means. But we already see we needed that memory for PLSQL. Very good. So whenever you see this, then then you can use this KGHLU script um, five three nine six hundred you see this uh, this this uh, number one there used to be number one here so we tried to uh, free a bunch of chunks from the main shared pool area and we failed, you know, this unsuccessful went up by one. Plus, then we went to the reserved area and we also failed. This went up from one to two again. And uh, uh, apparently this doesn't work. Uh, uh, it should show me the last failure size. But because of my earlier test earlier today, I actually once even tried to allocate a bit more, 40 bytes more than this time. So that's, that shows the maximum size. This should show the last size, but you know, sometimes these things are buggy. All right. So, uh, before I look into a trace file, I think we are running out of time as well. 
I'll show you another script. This is based on, the, on an X dollar table. So there is a table called X dollar KSMLRU. So I just have a script with this name. So I select from X dollar KSMLRU. All right. And the X dollar KSMLRU is a, is a really useful view which shows you the, uh, shows you who flushed out what and why. So uh, um, it, it uh, um, you know, <clears throat> it even shows you this, this data here, even when the aura 4031 didn't happen. Because what, what usually or often happens is that, uh, um, that uh, uh, you know, even before you see the aura 4031, before that you already see bad performance. So, uh, you know, and sometimes you have every week or whenever this issue happens, you have bad performance, high CPU usage, uh, shared pool latch contention, a lot of junk flushed out from shared pool and everybody complains. So this is when you can look into X dollar KSMLRU. This shows you that this is like a, 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 um, a top, a list of top flushers. And uh, let me just look into, uh, uh, into the bottom one. So apparently somebody has flushed out 16 chunks. Um, by the way, even before we go there, this doesn't count the chunks flushed out from the transient end of LRU list. Because transient chunks, you know, these ones which are used only once, you know, their SQL statement which is executed only once, that's supposed to be flushed out anyway. So uh, this only counts these chunks which are flushed out from the recurrent end. So we flush out everything from the transient end, we still don't get what, what we want, then we proceed to the recurrent, frequently used end of the, of the LRU list. And this is when these numbers will be incremented. Oracle, by the way, flushes out eight chunks at a time and then sees, you know, merges whatever adjacent chunks it finds during this flush and then sees whether it has enough space, whether it finds a big enough free chunk. If it doesn't, then it takes another eight and so on. Uh, so, so if you look, look into this, you know, this is a normal thing to see. Uh, for example, somebody flushed out 16 chunks uh, we wanted to allocate something for this reason. Well, put it into MetaLink, you might get lucky and see what it is. Put it into MetaLink bug, bug section. This is the allocation size. We wanted to get 4,200 bytes. And this is the beginning of SQL text. And this is the hash, hash value. So I, I can actually go to v$sql or you know, some historic table and see what is the, the full SQL text. Or even hash, you know, you can even look into hash if you know how to convert hash values to SQL, to partial SQL ID. Um, all right, but basically where I'm getting at is, is this. It's fine to flush out a few chunks. You know, 100 chunks, it's not so, so big of a problem either. But you see Oracle lists that somebody has flushed out five, you know, 4,000 chunks. So, you know, that's got to gotta be a problem because if you want to flush out 4,000 chunks, you've got to hold the shared pool for quite a long time. And you cannot just throw away the shared pool chunk without notifying the library cache. Because, you know, you might have a cursor who has an execution plan in a separate chunk. And now you want to flush out that execution plan. You cannot just throw it away. You actually have to go to that cursor as well to the cursor metadata and you have to update the pointer. You have to say to that cursor that, hey, I just removed your execution plan. So next time you want to execute this, ex execute yourself, uh, you know, you have to recreate um, that um, plan. So when you flush out things, you won't see only shared pool latch contention. You will actually see library cache latch contention or library cache mutex contention, depending on the version of Oracle. But anyway, this guy is the troublemaker. We, want, we flushed out 4,000 chunks because we tried to allocate 500 uh, kilobytes for this, uh, some sort of this reason. If you don't know what it is, then put it into MetaLink. This is, by the way, the session address. This is the address of the session state object who performed the flush.
But the problem with this is that uh, this address, you know, maybe the troublemaker has logged out already or crashed or whatever. And the new session logged on and just reused the same slot at that address. So you cannot be really sure whether the session who is logged on right now here is the one uh, who caused this trouble. Well, what helps is if you look into the logon time um, to see uh, uh, you know, when this session logged on. Because if the problem happened an hour ago and this session logged, out, logged on five hours ago already, then you know, you know that this session is the troublemaker. All right. So. And see what's going on. So this, this script is just a select query, as you see. We select from x dollar ksmlru. I run it again. And you see it content, its contents change. What Oracle does, so this x dollar ksmlru is, is, a, is, a, is a really fun view. It, it resets its contents to empty when you query it. So, so this, it keeps like a top list, I think it's top 10, you see, in my case it seems to be top 10. Top 10 flushers. And if I don't query it for months, then what I see here is, is the top flusher during this multiple months of time. And the moment I query it, its contents are reset and this top list is, is built again. It starts from scratch. So you see, the next time I ran it, uh, that the 4000 went away and the next, you know, during, uh, during my, my, my query here or wh while I was talking, uh, you know, somebody flushed out 80 chunks and so on. So what I've done sometimes to monitor things is something like this. And basically, uh, I sleep something like for five minutes, and then I insert more and more. And of course, I insert the timestamp as well. So uh, sometimes when, when troubleshooting uh, really nasty problems, I've, I've done this. So, uh, you know, we, we, we troubleshoot, we look into AWRs and whatever numbers, and we, we, don't, we cannot pinpoint exactly what's going on yet. But uh, uh, then, uh, you know, in order to capture more data next time it happens, we write a bunch of scripts which collect these X dollar data into into a table, so next time the problem happens, you, you have more data to work on. So it's safe to query this guy. Let me, let me do it this way. X dollar So it's safe to query this guy, it's safe to query this guy, but it's not safe to query that guy because this guy goes through the entire shared pool while holding shared pool latches. And you, you can hang your database so that even SUSDBA cannot log on. Whenever, if you ever have to do this, if you have to query this, then make sure you know your, the SPID of your process, who is querying it, and log on to that Unix box. And when the hang lasts for longer than desired, then you can do a kill minus nine or on your process. Because 10 pmon will clean up after your process and it will release the latches you held. But even SysDBA cannot log on when shared pool latches held for a long time. Because every session, including SysDBA's one, needs to allocate space in shared pool. Okay, so. So we did, we did hit this error. I'm going to show you the last thing about the trace file. We did hit this error here. Uh, and uh, starting from um, some version, probably 10G again, um, there are a bunch of new parameters called 4031 dump bitvec. This is actually a bitmap. Um, I'm not going to convert it to bits or, or binary, but I'm going to convert it to hex, so it would be a bit uh, perhaps uh, more obvious. So uh, this is a bitmap, 
and in hex it looks like that, in binary it would look like a bunch of ones and zeros. And every one and zero hit there has a meaning that what details to dump out when, when an aura 4031 happens. So uh, um, there, there, there should be a, a note in Metalink or, or there probably is infor information in Metalink about what these bits mean. Uh, I have a note somewhere as well. Uh, maybe someday I will uh, publish it if I if I if I find it. Um, uh, so uh, um, so basically, uh, but thanks to this uh, mechanism, uh, uh, Aura forty thirty one dumps are done when you have a have an error. And Oracle actually has another parameter which kind of protects you from too many dumps, because if you have a thousand sessions and now you run out of space then you don't want all these thousand sessions start performing a heap dump, you know, there's the 4031 dump. So uh, actually there, is, there are some limits. Uh, one limit is that uh, don't uh, do more dumps than once per hour here. Okay. Before this parameter appeared, uh, the solution was something like this. I'll do it with alter session, but you would need to do it with alter system or put it into SP file or init aura. You know, you probably all know this. This is how you enable SQL trace, for example. You set an event 10046 and you have this extra details here. But equally, you can uh, use this, uh, you can set actions for errors. That whenever an error happens, do something. So basically, whenever 4031 happens, do this trace name. Heap dump level two, and I don't want. I, I will just say explicitly lifetime one. So level two is again dangerous in the sense that that uh, uh, it takes a heap dump. So it actually just like that bad x dollar table uh, or this dangerous x dollar table here. It actually takes the shared pool latches and walks through the entire shared pool and potentially hangs your instance for seconds or minutes, or if you hit the bug, then for hours or forever, right? Uh, so, but what I do here is that when this error happens, then, then do a heap dump, level two, that's the shared pool, and lifetime one means that do the heap dump and then turn this event off. I can use like lifetime 10, then it means that whenever you hit this error again and again and again, then, you know, 10, during 10 occurrences of that error due to this dump. But uh, I say lifetime one here. So at least it kind of, uh, it, it allows us to, well, hopefully you get less dumps that way. But you don't need to use this approach if your database is new enough to, to have this, uh, this parameter. So, and you would need to use alter system or, you know, put it into initora. And uh, next time the issue happens, in a session, then this dump is done. Uh, however, there is another problem that this, even if you use alter system here, then this life, lifetime here is session specific. Every session has a lifetime number one. So actually you still have the risk that if, if, if 50 sessions hit the same error at the same time because share pool ran out of, out of space, then you will have 50 heap dumps. So, um, you know, I wouldn't really use that without uh, serious discussion with Oracle support or 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 somebody who is who is familiar with with this share pool uh, share pool stuff. Um, okay, but anyway, thanks to this parameter, Oracle did dump uh, some information into trace file. You see, this is the trace file. In the beginning, you already said that if you don't want this, if this causes trouble to you and makes the problem worse, then you can set this bit back to zero, right? Then everything is done, uh, disabled, all right? And, uh, and you know, by the way, I'm not gonna go through the whole dump. Uh, we should, would need another session for that, but I'll just show you the main thing here. So. Uh, 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 you know, the same data what you already saw. We wanted to allocate. What's important is that what for, uh, 
and what did we, how much space we tried to allocate. So did we have a heavy uh, fragmentation issue or we just uh, requested uh, a way big chunk um, at the wrong time or had not configured our um, shared pool reserved area big enough for our workload. All right. I hope you see the screen. In Metalink, there is actually a, a, a note here. There is a note which uh, um, kind of walks you through from uh, how to read this automatically generated uh, Aura 4031 dump. Apparently, it's available since 9205, so which is nice. So that's kind of covers almost all um, reasonable databases. Um, I'm sure somebody still runs 7.3 somewhere and they die, but, uh, but these are usually not this, uh, uh, not this most, uh, um, these are usually some legacy databases, which, which not that many people care about anymore until they break, of course. Uh, all right. Uh, so the heap dump, I'm not going to you know, go much into details, so the heap dump is this, you, you see, actually, uh, you see, these are the uh, uh, Oracle allocates share pool heap in, 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 in extents, actually, as well, so there are things called memory extents, and what you see, this is the address of that extent, or, or the chunk in the extent where it begins from, and uh, the size of it, and you see the status. So apparently we have a chunk which is that many bytes, which is free. There is, a, there is some other chunk which is used by somebody, but it's freeable by the allocator, and it's used for this reason. So this tells you the reason. What object? Is it, like a, is, is it a SQL area? Is it some statistics uh, area? And so on. And why I, why I searched here, you see free lists tells you how many um, free chunks you have. And this shared pool has many free lists, like 254 free lists uh, for very small chunks, a bit bigger chunks, a bit bigger chunks. So whenever you have a chunk uh, which size is 88 bytes up to this, this size here, it's put under this free list. So that Oracle, you know, if you, Oracle knows in, in, in advance how much memory you need, or whenever you allocate memory, you tell Oracle that, hey, give me 88 bytes then Oracle knows that it should start from this bucket where chunks starting from 88 bytes are. You know, there is no reason to go here. You go to this 88, and if, if you don't find what you want from here, you go to the next size. And if you find a chunk from here, you will split it into what's, what you require, plus whatever remains, you will put back to this appropriate uh, bucket. So this heap dump, it looks kind of uh, scary, but it actually it's very simple. It's contents just, you know, it, it shows you a lot of lines with, with information about which chunk, how big it is, in which location it is, uh, and is it free or not? And if it's not free, then what was it allocated for? So the, the structure of a heap dump is really simple if you, if you kind of um, uh, look into that. And I've written a little script which I, uh, again, you can download as well. It's called Heap Dump Analyzer, which all it does, it just kind of aggregates the contents a bit. All right, I gotta scroll upwards. All right, here it is. So, so basically, just if you look into that script, you see it's very simple. It just it just aggregates and sums up some some details a bit. So. Um, um, uh, uh, for example, I see that there is in SJ heap, so this is the shared pool heap actually, we have uh, 1400 chunks which are of that size and they, they total this much, right? And they are done for permanent allocations. So um, all these, you know, internal allocations what Oracle uses. Uh, so apparently there is some sort of SJ IO buffer um, where, where some IO is buffered. Um, so and I would probably want to search for free if I'm troubleshooting something. I want to see 
what is the biggest free chunk. So you see, there seems to be one chunk which is, which is uh, almost four megabytes. But this chunk itself is not, it's not in the share pool heap anymore. I mean, uh, I mean uh, uh, if you read it like this, so this heap dump has done a recursive dump. So whenever it found another heap inside the shared pool heap, then it went on and dumped that as well, yeah, like recursively, or it, it just went in that. And you see, uh, we have allocated, uh, we have allocated almost four megabytes from, you know, from heap is here, from the shared pool heap. It's a recreatable chunk, and it's probably pinned all the time. I, I, I think. Um, and the reason why we allocated, or what for did we allocate it, uh, is this. So we allocated this for this reason, or this is the chunk type. And actually, recursively, the same chunk here, it's dumped out. So basically, we, we go inside that, that allocation, and we recognize that, hey, it's another heap. It's actually a heap inside a heap. And we have dumped it as well, and the contents of that heap now are free. But the shared pool manager cannot throw this away, or it, it cannot use this because you know the shared pool doesn't look inside its allocations. All it knows, all the shared pool manager knows, is that it has a recreatable uh, chunk here allocated for this reason. So, um, um, so I just wanted to show that what kind of uh, uh, useful data you would get out from a heap dump uh, file. And uh, I've spoken to Oracle support recently, and uh, the guys behind the, my Oracle support, and uh, they are actually uh, building a tool which allows you to upload these trace files into, into Metalink. And then it analyzes it and, and, and gets back to you with common, uh, with, um, with, with, with uh, some recommendations. Basically, it basically checks for common things done wrong, like subpool imbalance and stuff like that. And, uh, and uh, um, and recommends you something. All right, so I'm over time. Nevertheless, I'm going to show you one more thing. I'm not going to go too much into detail, but I'll show you one more thing. Um, when I query V dollar latch children since nine dot two onwards. I will actually see that we have seven shared pool latches. So, uh, uh, so you know, this is not true anymore that there is only one shared pool and one shared pool latch. Actually, since 9.2, Oracle can have up to seven shared pool sub pools. And each of these sub pools, you know, they are all separate, they're, they're all physically separate from each other. And each of the, these sub pools are, are, uh, 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 you know they have they are protected by their own latch. So there is actually a parameter which is a, which you, if you search in MetaLink it's mentioned a lot because sometimes people need to modify it. This is the parameter which controls it. It's automatically decided by based on the number of CPUs you have and based on the SGA size or shared pool size actually. Um, in my little laptop, it's one, but if you have like 32 CPUs and more and big enough share pool, you, would, you might actually see seven there. In my case, I see the same info from here. You see, only one latch is heavily used. The other six latches are only used when, when share pool is resized or initialized. Or I think flush uses the others as well. But we, we really only actually use one sub pool because you know only one latch is used uh, heavily I just logged on to a different database of mine where this is four I've actually manually set it to four so this is how many shear pool sub heaps we have And you see, we still have seven shared share pool latches. So this is actually hard coded into Oracle, but four of them are used. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so um, uh, we we see that you know we have four sub pools.
and I just want to, I'm not going to troubleshoot much here, but I just want to show you um, what this means. For example, when you query v dollar SGA stat, right, I uh, just uh, query only three, uh, this three chunks. You see, we have that much of free memory in the shared pool. Okay, so 120 megs of free memory. But we don't know how much free memory we have in each sub pool. Th there is a chance that, you know, three of the sub pools are almost empty and one of them is, is uh, almost full. And, and whenever you end up allocating from this one sub pool, you get this error. And in 9i days, it was fairly common. So this is why people, uh, um, you know, if you look into Metalink and search for that parameter, this is why people often set it back to 1. And even nowadays, it's, uh, I've uh, fixed problems in 11g as well by reducing it for, from 4 to 2 or from 7 to 3 or something like this. So if you don't have heavy uh, shared pool latch contention or heavy, you know, um, SQL without bind variables, then you don't really need that many sub pools. So it was introduced for reducing uh, uh, the shared pool latch contention. Uh, because, you know, instead of one latch, you will, would have seven latches which are all used less. But the problem here is that this, uh, um, we don't know how this free memory breaks down here. But luckily the X dollar table under this V dollar SJ is that has this info. It actually breaks, breaks the usage down. So if you use my script SJ stat X, again it should be in my in the in the script zip file with my scripts. It tells you uh, how the space is allocated. So the total space is 300 megabytes. So my shared pool is 300 megs. But you see, this is the breakdown how different sub pools use it. So apparently three sub pools have gotten 80 megs, but sub pool number four uh, has had more allocations when the instance started up. And that's why it grabbed more of that free space to itself. Or, or, or it grabbed more of that unin uninitialized space to itself. And as I search for free, now I see how this space has been uh, uh, broken down. And I see that, uh, well, you know, it's, so this pool has 24 megs of free space. This has 35, um, 33, and so on. So we don't see too bad imbalance from here. But, but, but on the other hand, we don't know how, how fragmented this free memory is. Perhaps one pool has better fragmentation, other, other one has worse. So, uh, but anyway, so with multiple sub pools, it's, it is possible to see this info. Also, when you use this script, what I showed you earlier, earlier it returned only one row. You know, how many flushes we have, how many failures, you know, or afforded 31s. So when you have multiple sub pools, you will see that from here as well. So for each sub pool, we see the difference, um, uh, how many flushes we've had and so on. So if you constantly have this misses here or here, you see this number goes up and up and up, but the other sub pools don't have this problem. Well, that's, you know, a fair, fair indicator that there is something wrong with this sub pool. Or the yet another script which tells, tells you who has flushed and how much for what kind of allocation, you know, and how, for how big allocation, then you will see the sub pools from here as well. Again, this is the sub pool number. If you see the biggest flushes are always in the sub pool number two, you know, always thousands of flushes have been done from sub pool number two, then, uh, well, there, you know, there may be a sub pool issue. Then you would need to go to go to the SGA stat X script, and you know first of all check whether all the all the sub pools are roughly uh, uh, the same size. If they if they are not, then unfortunately there is nothing you can do. Well, other than increasing the other than dynamically increasing the shared pool. But otherwise, you know this when this guy doesn't ever release this memory. Uh, you know, back on its own. So either you should try to make your shared pool smaller and then bigger again, 
uh, or just bigger. If you have shared pool problems, then you probably don't want to make it smaller anyway, at least not during the critical production time. Because when you make it smaller, a lot of things have to be flushed out, which makes the whole parsing and CPU usage and, and shared pool latch contention cycle much worse. All right. So, so this is the this is a script um, which uh, which is on based on this dangerous X dollar, and I actually and it's taken from MetaLink and I've modified it a bit to suit my needs better. And um, um, you see, I actually say a warning, and now you can press Enter or Control C. I think I had a little formatting issue here. Okay, so I ran this X dollar case MSP, and uh, and uh, this is a script for analyzing uh, fragmentation as well. And I just wanted to show you it, it's it's basically doing the same thing like I I showed you in the beginning when I ran this group by on various columns on the X dollar case MSP. So this script queries the same view. It does the same thing, but it's slightly more pretty and more sophisticated. And you see, if you have multiple sub pools, then you get this information for each each sub pool. And as I searched for free memory here, I get the list of free memory chunks. So uh, uh, what you see from here is that, uh, well, we have 45 chunks which are bigger than 10 kilobytes in sub pool number one, right? So the total space is 14 megs, and uh, and the uh, uh, max bytes is what you want. You see, the biggest chunk, the maximum, the biggest chunk, uh, biggest free chunk in this sub pool is uh, seven megabytes. So you know it's a, it's a very big chunk. Here you have even twelve megabytes. So you know you, we definitely don't have a fragmentation issue in these uh, in these uh, 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 sub pools. I mean, yes, the part, some of the sub pool may be fragmented, and that's fine, you know, that's how Oracle heaps work, or that's how any heap works, really, but uh, with, with variable allocation sizes. But, uh, you know, at least we don't have a problem. You know, if, even, if any, even if somebody wanted 500 kilobytes, then they still would be able to get it from here, because the biggest free chunk, biggest continuous free chunk is, is, is 12 megs. So we don't have a fragmentation problem here. But if I run the same one on my other database where I did have this uh, or error, I have to specify what I'm looking for because I'm looking for free chunks, right? So you see, in the previous output we had chunks all the way to ten kilobytes or, or sorry over ten kilobytes, so because that's already a big size and. And you know some chunks were tens or or over over ten megabytes. But here the biggest chunks are between four and five kilobytes. Actually, I think there is some measuring error, but they're more more like more like between three and four. I think there is a rounding issue here in this in this query. But anyway, you see uh, we don't have uh, too big chunks, so we actually have uh, a chunk which is four thousand thirty two only. So, uh, so we already have like an issue because if, if I want four kilobytes, four thousand ninety six kilobytes, then uh, uh, then we would have to flush something out from here. We cannot get four thousand ninety six bytes from uh, from the free area because the biggest one is a, a few bytes smaller, and we cannot allocate four thousand ninety six from here either, from the uh, reserved area. Because in order to go and fall back into this reserved area, this allocation size has to be at least that big. So, so you would get if you want to allocate uh, 4,096 bytes, you go here. You cannot get that much from the free list. Then you flush out something, and let's let's say you during the flush you didn't find any bigger chunks either. Then you immediately get the aura 4031. You are not gonna go into this bigger area uh, to to fragment it further with your little allocations. All right, so I'm only 35 minutes overdue, so uh, 
it's actually better than last time. And I think uh, in the morning I went 40 minutes over time. So, uh, all right, let's let's see some questions. Uh, I only will take a couple of questions. So that's the that's the that's the issue with this uh, uh, free seminars. You know, uh, if you, if you come and attend my troubleshooting seminars, you will actually see slides as well occasionally. Plus, you can ask for more questions. Uh, so, what is a simulator? So, um, if you see things like simulator LRU and simulator hash latch, so uh, um, look into my blog. If you search for something like uh, library cache simulator panel potter, uh, I have written a blog entry. So uh, I explain there what it is. So basically simulators are memory structures and some code which is used for remembering which cursors were where in memory. And if you remember which cursor was in memory in past, then when you have to reload it and reparse it, then you know that, hey, I'm reparsing something which already was in memory. Therefore, if my shared pool was somewhat bigger, then I wouldn't have to do this reparsing work again, and I would save time. So all the advisors, the library cache, uh, sorry, sh shared pool and buffer cache advisors work on simulators. They just remember what kind of cursors were in memory and which, uh, uh, so when you reload something back, you know, either you reload a buffer from disk to buffer cache, or you reparse a, a a statement which already was in cache. Then you know that that um, it was already in memory, but it apparently was flushed out. So these advisors work based on that. So let's see what else. Uh, so one one question I think uh, is is uh, what what all most of you ask uh, have in mind. Do you, can you see a recording of this session? So uh, yes, very probably. So my recording still works, or it still hasn't crashed my PC. So uh, uh, I hope that it, it actually saved the file, and I hope that I can actually upload it somewhere. Uh, so uh, um, so yes, there is some ninety-eight percent chance that you will see the recording. I will uh, I will uh, blog blog about it once it's up. Uh, so. Um, I will ignore one question about PGA aggregate target, so it's not related really to um, to shared pool uh, issues. So uh, that's a separate topic, maybe for some other day. Um, so let's see, oh, how do I open the questions? Okay, what else do we have? Uh, so I, I think yeah, one, one very good question is that okay, uh, what if uh, what if you actually hit ORA 4031s? And that the, or maybe you don't see them yet, but you already have this uh, flushing and parsing spikes and so on. And so, and you have shared pool fragmentation. Uh, and you know, one of the things which you may want to do as a workaround for, you know, for reaching at least the evening or, or weekend to fix it, um, one of the things is then, uh, you know, flushing to shared pool. But flushing shared pool is not really you know, at some point of time, it may help you the first time or the second time, and in some cases, it may co continue to help you. Um, you know, to to stay below this critical critical mass of fragmentation. But sometimes you actually flush, you call, call, cause all this parsing trouble, but things don't get better because you your share pool is so full of pinned small chunks which cannot be flushed out anyway. Or you have some other, you know, a bug or memory leak in the in the in the shared pool. So what are the options? How do how do I keep my server running uh, to, uh, um, you know, so I could I wouldn't have to restart it during the day? And well, the answer number one is just make the shared pool bigger. You know, there is there is no no easy way around it if you already have this problem. Make the shared pool bigger. Um, uh, Maybe don't bump it up by a gigabyte immediately. Maybe add, you know, a hundred megs per hour, uh, or or you know, uh, some amount uh, incrementally until you reach the evening when you can shut down or or the weekend. So uh, so I wouldn't you know just bump it up by a gigabyte. I would just you know add add smaller pieces. 
you gotta do it if if your SGA target is already at the SGA max size, right? Then then you have to uh, uh, then you have to uh, well just reduce your buffer cache, or if you don't use SGA target, you still can uh, manually alter the buffer cache smaller and increase the share pool. Yes, something will go slower because you will have less buffers cached, but at least you won't have these parsing issues um, and the, for, for the 30 ones. Uh, but again, you know, if you, you know, a lot of these issues come from not bad Oracle configuration, but uh, from not using uh, proper um, cursor management, from not using bind variables. This is how you end up fragmenting your share pool much faster. You will hit this critical mass much faster than normally. Um, but I have to admit that one of these common issues from Oracle side side is this multiple sub pools. So this parameter what I showed you, it's actually one of the, I mean, over half of the share pool re related issues what I've troubleshooted at the end resolution or one of these things has been to actually reduce the number of sub pools. You know, seven sub pools, you don't, I, I don't see how you need this. And especially when you eventually start using bind variables properly and you, you don't log on and out for every separate uh, request then uh, you know then you don't really need the share pool latches that much at all because everything is, you need is already loaded into cache. Mm, so one comment the question about the reserved area that doesn't I mentioned that if the if the allocation size is small let's say it's it's three kilobytes and now you now you don't find space from the main shared pool area. Then if the allocation is three kilobytes, it's not gonna try to allocate uh, 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 this, uh, uh, this three kilobytes from the reserved area, because then it would uh, uh, mess up the reserved area even more. Uh, but, but if the alloca allocation is bigger than this parameter specified, this uh, uh, minimum allocation size, uh, then it will try to go to reserved area if it doesn't find what it wants from the, from the main shared pool. Okay. Because if you do let these small allocations, small allocations into reserved pool, there is a chance that you cannot get them out of there anymore because, uh, because uh, you know, they are pinned. And then maybe all your tens of megabytes of the reserved area are unusable um, uh, uh, for the large allocation because every, every now and then or you know every here and there, every location here and there, you have uh, this little fish or small fish who blocks the space for a bigger one. Um, one question that should you flush the share pool uh, at least three times in order to, uh, in order so that it would work well because of dependencies, uh, and the reason is not dependencies because when you flush something out. Um, so, uh, okay, so the dependencies, uh, um, I, I don't think this is the reason. So, um, you know, you can have a table definition or some sort of view definition in, uh, in library cache, and now you, a SQL depends on it. Uh, so, uh, uh, if, you, if you reach that, um, and you know, so if, if, if this uh, SQL is unpinned, uh, then uh, uh, you can throw it away. You, if you reach that SQL, you can flush out uh, the SQL. And once you re re uh, arrive to the view definition in library cache uh, or that object, you can flush it out as well. And if it's the other way around, if you first arrive at the view definition, then you can still uh, throw it away because you will walk the dependencies. You will see that, okay, I wanna, I wanna throw away this view definition and oops, I cannot throw it away because somebody depends on me but then you can walk the dependencies and see who depends on me. So, uh, uh, and you see that, hey, there is a SQL which depends on me, which is unpinned, and I can flush it out. Um, so, uh, so, uh, so this is doable thanks to the dependency list, but I have to admit I'm not fully sure whether Oracle actually does it. So there may be something there that, uh, that, um, uh, uh, that uh, perhaps if, uh, if a chunk is used by other objects in library cache. You know, it has dependencies. Perhaps Oracle just bails out and doesn't flush it out. 
But uh, I have to guess here. I would guess that Oracle actually does walk the dependencies because you want to flush out everything. But I think the other, the bigger reason is, is that if you constantly execute cursors, then if you do a, a share pool flash, then uh, at first time, some of these executions or some of these objects may, may be not flushed out because they happened to be pinned at the time. So when you run another flush after that immediately, then perhaps these chunks, uh, which were pinned three seconds ago, they are not pinned anymore. And you can flush them out as well. And therefore opening up a better chance to coalesce free chunks into bigger ones. So yes, when I want to, uh, so I, I think, you know, long story short, when I want to have this emergency workaround and desperate workaround and I have flushed the share pool, I usually have flushed it twice. Not, uh, so more than once, but, uh, you know, twice or you can just try three uh, as well. Unfortunately, you know, it's not easy to test this kind of thing because you don't want to test this out in your production environment. Um, and if you run a little benchmark in test environment, it may not really, you know, represent the real reality. Um, so, when I showed you Snapper, uh, let's see if we see this. Um, so, one more question is that I showed you that there is a, a parse count. This is the soft parses, and if you know, soft parse always happens anyway. And if uh, uh, so, this goes up anyway. If you if you do parse, if you open a cursor and parse, uh, so and hard parse additionally happens. It happens as well if you don't find your cursor from cache. But the question was that uh, what about uh, if the cache if the cursor is in cursor cache? So as Tom Kite has said, you know. When the cursor cache, when your when your when your statement is in a cursor cache, then a softer soft parse happens. You still have a soft parse, but it's softer. Uh, and the reason is that cursor cache already keeps uh, the library cache lock in place and pointers to the actual physical location of the cursor. So so soft parse means that you have to do a library cache lookup because you don't know where your cursor physically is. But the softer soft parse thanks to the cursor cache, doesn't have to do a library cache lookup. It doesn't have to walk through the library cache, uh, the, you know, uh, hash tables, because the pointers to the physical location of the cursor are in place. And now there is a question that, is there a statistic which shows that whether you had a softer soft parse or not? And yes, there is. So session cursor cache hits. So when you run snapper on a session, well, let's run it. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, ridiculously over time anyway, so uh, what the hell. Uh, I'm gonna run lots of uh, soft parses. So uh, lots of soft parses is another loop which just parses the same statement all over again. So uh, um, let me just use a new session. So it, it just parses the same statement. So it should be a lot of soft parses and a lot of cursor cache hits. So my seed is 149. Let's run snapper on it. I'm actually lazy. I have a shortcut called SN which runs snapper for me with these options you see there. No, okay, so I think this gets even uh, even better because in this case, uh, you see we have a, a lot of recursive calls and a lot of executes. So we execute um, 34,000 times. So this is because, uh, I mean, this is my PLSQL loop which executes the same cursor. But, uh, but PLSQL actually keeps cursors open. So PLSQL has a further optimization, so it uses its own um, uh, cursor cache. So it actually keeps the cursor open. So we don't see this statistic from here. But I can just do this. Let's just run a new test. You see I run this multiple times and let's see. I run snapper. Alright, so snapper runs for five seconds. I will run this guy once. 
So now we should have a parse and, and so on. See how many stats were incremented, including SQL net, you know, SQL net round trips and so on. Snapper shows you these stats which changed. You know, it doesn't show you these stats which were zero, which, which sorry, which didn't change during this five seconds. Every session has over 600 different stats, by the way. So that's a that's a gold mine. Uh, this says that. All right. Anyway, so we have we see a parse count. We only did one parse during this time. We don't see parse count hard anywhere, so therefore we didn't do any hard parses. And we also see that the session cursor cache hit is one. So we had one soft parse, but it happened to be uh, the softer soft parse because we had a cursor cache hit. So uh, this is how you know that the softer, softer soft parse happened. So next time if you see that the parse count was 10, but cursor cache hits was five, then you know that uh, you know five soft parses actually resulted in the library cache lookup as well. But the other five, uh, uh, you know, were were session cursor cache hits. So basically, you found the existing cursor. Uh, it's already open actually uh, from your cursor cache in UGA, and you could follow the pointers directly to uh, to the physical location of the cursor in in the shared pool. Uh, all right, I think I'll take one more question and then we gotta finish. I, I'm sure some people have worked with you as well here, um, and then we'll wrap it. Um, so uh, one question was that uh, uh, let's see, one question was that um, I think this is like a topic for for some other day. But nowadays you can have buffer cache inside shared pool, right? So you, you, you heard it right. Nowadays you can have buffer cache inside shared pool. Uh, Google buffer cache inside shared pool, right? If you Google for that, you will end up in my blog and you will see um, this, this article. And actually you can have it in streams pool as well as it turned out later. So if, I look, if you look into the second article, And that's a good, uh, good. That's a good article for finishing up. And actually, so uh, next time when you look into SGA stat and you see KGH no access, so that for some reason somebody takes ten me megabytes from my shared pool for KGH no access, then read this article further. I have evidence or proof which shows that this memory inside shared pool is actually part of buffer cache. So this memory is used uh, by these buffers, for example. So uh, this is the block number, uh, file number, block number, and object ID. And the reason this is needed for uh, SGA target, it's needed for automatically, or it's needed for reducing shared pool size if needed. So, uh, well, you can read about that uh, yourself. Okay. So I could go on for another four hours, but um, I think that's enough. I, I hope that this recording will turn out well and I will try to up, upload it somewhere. Um, so uh, uh, thanks for attending this session. Uh, we had like uh, uh, almost 200 people, I think, uh, logged on to this one. So that's really, it's really awesome. I think I'll, I'll be doing more of these sessions. Um, so check out my blog, check out, check out my awesome seminars where you actually can ask questions with voice and get uh, you know, almost all your questions answered. And, uh, and uh, you know, stay tuned. Uh, I, I will probably do more of these events uh, in the near future. Uh, so uh, thanks very much and I'm gonna log out now. Bye.